welcome everybody who's not watching this live right now because we're not broadcasting. But uh, oh, now, now, now people it are watching. Work like That's that. right. What uh, an age. <laughs> <laughs> Great intro. Yeah, Pat Vellner. What's going on, dude? Not much. What are you doing do? here in Miami? Why are you here? You do not belong in a climate that has sun. Yeah, absolutely right. I'm going to spend most of my time indoors. Like, if I'm not on the, uh, the competition floor, I'll probably be inside. You walked over Very here smart. from wherever it is you're staying, and I imagine you put on some sort of sunscreen just for that walk. Oh, I have full barrier. I actually would, just took a full jacket off. Yeah, you're cause... still pink, though. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it, yeah. It did not work. Whatever you did didn't work, so up that, up that sunscreen gear. <laughs> Another level? Yeah, okay. I get uh, the zinc. I'll wear a full face mask. You know, we ran into uh, Brent Fikowski. And he said he to give this <coughs> to yeah, his this biggest fan. this was super fan. important for you. It's oh, a nice. signed Brent Fikowski I wish I had some. I don't have any good photos like that to return the favor with, so I'll I, have to work on something. I uh, I don't know when he Travis Williams himself and, like, lost a bet that he has to hand out pictures and <laughs> sign yeah, pictures of himself. But, uh, Sweeney. But it's definitely worth it. It's yeah, definitely man. worth it. When the workouts get tough this weekend, just remember this image and burn it into your brain. And this should motivate you. Yeah, definitely. I'll go see the professor and ask him for some advice. <laughs> He'll be floating around. Pat, you're the uh, you're the reigning, defending Wadapalooza champion of the world. Yeah. <laughs> Did I you am. get a belt for that? No. Did you wish you got a belt for that? That would be nice, actually. Maybe they'll do that this year. O'Keefe? We yeah, should really we'll get somebody belts. on that. Chief Keefe. Who Rogue did that last year? Did they give out a belt? Yeah. <laughs> it was just hilarious. It's awesome. That's really it's cool. It's super inconvenient. No, of course. But I, yeah, how do you get that back hilarious. through, like, security at the airport? It's just the questions. Like, they're like, so what is this? Well, I'm obviously like, a WWE well, wrestler. It's kind of like a trophy. It's like, uh, <laughs> they're like, uh huh. Why does it say second place on it? <laughs> oh. It's a whole other story. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, there's one thing that CrossFit and CrossFit competitions can learn from like strongman competitions, and it's that strongman trophies tend to be the most dope manly shit ever. Oh, am I allowed to cuss this since it's being broadcast? To everybody, whatever. <laughs> it's the dopest it's shit ever. It's like swords or axes or like bronze a skulls a shield yeah crossfit needs to get in on that action we just need to start throwing in very inconvenient but also very cool things to hang <laughs> up in thing. your garage i don't know gym. if my my house can handle that kind of a trophy room like a like, yeah, like you win so much so inconvenient <laughs> just have these like oh what's this sorry relics yeah, a big old like, suit of armor from where you won Wadapalooza in 2020. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, man, I don't remember which one of these swords like a was from which sanctional, but uh, the Japanese one's the katana. That's pretty cool. <laughs> what's a, what's like a Miami sword? I don't even know what it, it looks it's, like. A Cubano sandwich. It's a bronzed, three foot long <laughs> Cubano. You went just much pull safer up some, with like, that than some, I would. Some sunken treasure or something from out of the bay. Give that us was, give us the chest. <laughs> like the That'll old work. school like you win the poker tournament and they have the whole like <laughs> yeah. from dodgeball they have the big chest they open that has the cash in it uh no so you are the reigning defending champ in wadapalooza you're here in miami you've already gotten your spot at the crossfit games thanks to a, a you know above average performance in the open yeah, yeah you did I'll mad say. decent i outperformed my my pay grade on that one. <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see. Don't expect to see more of that in the future, but we'll see. No, that's that's a one-off. Yeah. That's a one-off. Well, I should have retired after that. I, yeah, I, I wonder when that happens, is there is there the relief that you can just have nine months to yourself? Or is it, okay, now I have to live up to this in person or it's what? Called, it's called the peak, Armin. <laughs> there's, there's nowhere to go but down from there, you know? It's like the situation in uh, Fast and Furious when Paul Walker pulls his NOS too early. Yeah, yeah. And Vin Diesel's <laughs> yeah. the rest of the field just like... That's it. <laughs> I almost had you. You never had me. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's like, it's nice. I mean, the thing this year, obviously, with the timing of the uh, the competition schedule, like, most people from the games were just thought, ah, oh, you know, we'll ride out our, our fitness for a month and then try to just pull that through the open and then it like then it gets hard because you're you're hanging on to pretty high level fitness for like three months and then especially i mean i was going to dubai afterwards so then that gets it gets hard to maintain that level of effort and just stay focused um so the open's hard enough for five weeks but uh by the end of that i was like done with it but i couldn't really put it down because we had to compete still so mm. after dubai we got the chance to put it down a little bit and and regroup and then get ready for stuff like this and i mean the next couple, I've got a couple more stops I'm going to make before the games, and I think the focus now is still the long game. Um, we're going to make some stops and have some fun, compete against some strong guys. Uh, 
but I think it's not really necessarily meant to peak for every single competition. It'll be like mini peaks. You definitely want to put a good product on the floor, but um, I think that we're kind of aware of what we're doing. So it's cool. It's a nice feather in the cap, but it's not uh, it's not necessarily like the most important thing ever. I feel like the, the last time we spoke, you talked about that idea of like riding a very high level of fitness uh, into what would traditionally be an off season and how challenging that could be. I think physically it's doable. It's like the, the mental side of staying in the game yeah. and training that hard, right? Yeah, it's, I, got, I got asked that like recently at my gym. Somebody asked me like if it, you know, when you have a competition looming, like, is it harder? Like, do you train harder? Does, do things get harder? And it, to a certain degree, I think it gets a little bit easier because you have, you, you can really tangibly see your goal and you can say, okay, this is what I'm training for. So it becomes a bit easier to do hard things where you're like, when you have a really hard set or a hard piece or whatever it is, you can stay focused on what you're doing because you can kind of more easily imagine that competition context or where this applies. But when you've got, you know, say the games just finishes, you've got the open in a month and a half, two months, and so you're just like smashing yourself into dust doing like intervals on the bike, and you're mm. like, why? And it's just like, it's hard to be like, well, you know, I probably could take a month off and then pick it back up and be fine, but you know, it, it, it gets it gets harder to stay focused, and so you know I think it is the type of thing where your mental headspace makes a big difference. You know things feel easier because you're in the right headspace, and things can feel significantly harder if you're not. So when you can have that sort of flow state and level of focus, it makes it much much easier to do hard things. So you know I think there's a little bit of that balance, and then as you get burnt out, like that's what the burnout is: is you just you know the next day you just show up and you get on that bike and you're just like nah. Your output's like 80%, and you're just like, that was 100. I'm so glad to hear that existential dread on the bike is common. Oh. I always thought that was just a me thing. I always thought I was the only one that would just question why. Not yeah. just why the bike or why this workout, but just why. I don't think it's just, I don't think it's just common. I think it's 100% widespread across the board. Well, I think it's an uh, assault bike's guarantee. Like, if you don't have that. They have to return and replace the bike. Yeah, it's, yeah. The, it's the no smile guarantee. Yeah, it's the ennui guarantee. If yeah. you would. I mean, if you're doing it right, right. I think that any of those machines will give, will give you that if you're doing it right. Yeah. Any anybody that says they enjoy erg work, yeah, they're probably doing it wrong. They're either lying or broken, or, or they're like, <laughs> or they're, they're Roman Very kind of cough. Yeah. or they're Roman, right? Yeah. Or they're Roman. They're just forty percent lungs. Yeah. Just chin to belly button, all lungs. <laughs> yeah. So the first workout you guys got going on, it's uh, it's a little bit different this year. They're actually starting you guys off tonight, Thursday night. You're doing loose. Yeah. Yeah. How Pure much are workout. you looking forward to that uh, go ruck back? You got Man. like band aids ready? Oh, I I brought some like um, K tape kind of stuff that I might try to put on the little back there. Definitely. Man. Because you're like, gonna have why? to get that salt water Just tomorrow. Just why are we doing that? You are getting in the salt water tomorrow. Yeah, I totally it's, forgot it's about really that. Cruel. Eh, it's really you cruel. You won't really notice it. I just like. <laughs> Wait, it's worse getting in the shower. If I'm in a competition and I got to dive in the water, I won't really notice it. Focused on something else, but that's a good point. It sucks getting in the shower later, like you know, when you're warming up or you have to put a belt on or something like that for the next week before the adrenaline. Got to explain slowly. explain that tramp stamp scar for the rest of your life. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know why we're still screwing with these ruck bags, but okay. Um, Is it? Do you think it's a design flaw? Because I ha I got one. Um, and I've, I've worn it a couple times, but never with any weight in it. I think it's a combination of things. Like, I think it's a, it's a bit of a design flaw. It's a bit of an application flaw. It's a that's, bit of a preparation that's flaw. That's the key. It's probably the I, application flaw. I don't flaw. think Go Ruck set out and was like, yeah, people will probably do muscle-ups with these. No, 100%. <laughs> They're like, people are going to go hiking and put their stuff in And that's in the here. thing. Like, even at the games, like, like six kilometers running, you know, adding a bunch of load and load that's not fixed. We had these bags that were shaking in there, so you're causing this jostling. And I can guarantee, you know, anybody who, who goes with a ruck, like actual military ruck, they're probably placed slightly differently. They give us as good education as they can, but it just, people go with comfort. And then <clears throat> they also, you know, have tucked in shirts and hard belts. Like the problem is when people run, your shirts get swallowed up by those bags. And then you're either every hundred meters pulling your shirt down or you just are slowly getting this little burn. Just just allowing that chafage. So it's slowly, like, as your back gets sweaty, it starts to just eat your shirt, and then you just get messed mm. up. There's some psychos out there. Like, I don't think Sager ever wears a shirt when he wears a vest or a bag, and I don't understand he, that. He has that background, though, from, from football. He's probably used to, like, just crazy chafing all oh, over. Why That's probably his that thing. I wouldn't be able to pull the off the no-shirt like, vest yeah, because like it would chafe <laughs> the nips. 
You yeah. can't do nipple chafage. Well, yeah, that top strap. Those Man, are very, very tender. Yeah. Anyway, not as, many, with that. You know, not as many people have that surface area for nips. It's <laughs> a good point. It's a good point. Yeah. Krennikov's 40% lungs. I'm 40% nips. <laughs> so it, it, it does make certain things difficult. Yeah, I'm delicate. I, I definitely don't love those bags, but so I think it's a cool workout. It'll be fine. Yeah. I think it would have been the same workout with a weight vest. Correct. Uh, that's, I, that's I don't think that there's. it's necessary to use this ruck bag, but... That's the question. Is it... Is it harder to do muscle ups with the ruck versus? Absolutely, undoubtedly, okay. probably twice it's as hard. All on your back. Yeah, That's it's garbage. it's a balanced thing. So depending on how you do your kip, um, it it just yanks you differently, and it'll slow your transition a lot because as you're laying back and then you go to shoot your hips up and come forward, it all the weights on your back, so it slows that transition down a lot. Right. So if you already have a slower transition or you rely too heavily on a big swing in your kip, you're going to find it very difficult. So Lovely. what you're telling me is Travis Williams is. Uh, you know, laying, laying it all on the line and going unbroken on the muscle He's assured ups. me he's going to go unbroken. There's actually a bet between him and Brent. They've been placing bets all week, actually. So, and one, the first one is that he, this workout came out and he's apparently done it several times with a weight vest. So our trash talk group kicks up and first thing he says is like, he's licking his lips saying, oh, this is a layup. Like, I'm going to crush this. And we're like, guys, this is like 30 minute workout. I, I don't know <laughs> if you're going to crush this. It's, a, it's mostly running. And he's like, nah, it's all squats. <laughs> that's, so, that's the most Travis Williams confidence. Can we all just have a little bit of Travis Williams confidence? I, in our if bodies? I had just like a, a taste of that confidence, I don't know what would happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It would like, You'd probably own several businesses at this insane. point. It's I, insane. Like, I wish I could be that confident about anything ever. It's amazing. But, yeah, he just, uh, he, yeah, he comes in and he's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to for sure go unbroken on all the muscle ups. It's easy. Um, and then I'm going to go I, like this. I, you got to squat fast. It's all about the squats. It's like, well, Trav, like if you run like a four minute K, which you won't, you're going to, it means you're doing 12 minutes of running. And he says he's going to do all the squats in like two minutes every round. So it's like, okay, so cumulatively that's six minutes of squatting. So you have double the time running than squatting. How do you figure it's all squats? And I was like, just by this math, I, I don't, I don't see where you're coming from. And he's like, nah, just trust me, it's all squats. And mind you, the squats are hard. I, I tested it on Assault Runner, and I think it was squats became significantly harder as a result of that. But uh, I, I had to hand it to him that the squats were very difficult. And I think, yeah, if you're a guy in that last round that can absolutely light those last 100 squats on fire, you can make a difference. But to say that the run and the muscle-ups are not relevant is sort of an oversight. So anyways, he bet, he bet Brent that he would go unbroken on all the, all the muscle-ups, and finish in the top 20% of the field. I can't wait. So that's the that was the bet. So it was to ensure that he wouldn't just stand under the rings to do his muscles <laughs> unbroken and like scrap his overall time, saying like he could win like 40 bucks or whatever it is. It's like worth now, it. Now he has to finish in what what eighth? Is eighth that? eighth place or better, I think, is what top 40% would be. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly. Something all the, like all the people dropping out. Yeah, so the people dropping out. I don't know exactly what top 20% yeah, is don't know anymore. What's going on. So do you have? Do you have a favorite week uh, event this weekend that we've heard of so far, or do, do you even keep track of that? Like other than maybe testing a couple pieces here and there, I definitely keep track of them. I'm, of course, I do. I'm not doing my job if Student I'm not paying of the attention game. to that. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I hate them all <laughs> for different reasons, <laughs> but they're all going to be very interesting. There's a lot of a lot of fast short stuff this week, which is tough. Not stuff that I'm traditionally amazing at, but you know, it'd be cool to see. It's a good training test. Like I, some of the stuff we haven't been, you know, like say I haven't done a lot of barbell cycling in the last period of training and there's quite a bit of barbell cycling in a couple of events. So it's going to be a really good test to see where I'm at. Um, I think loose is a fine, it's a good event to start with. Cause we, I mean, I traveled pretty far. It's nice to have like a longer, lower intensity workout to start. Um, and I mean, we'll see like those assault bike sprints into overhead lunges tonight. It's going to be a treat. Uh, I have no idea. I haven't been doing a lot of sprinting on the bike and done some overhead walking lunging, but it's going to be cool to see how people stabilize with heavy weight overhead after a hard bike. Um, though that, that back to back, yeah. I think is the technical that, terms. That back to back workout on, I think it's Saturday night is going to be an absolute gong show. That one's the like clean and jerk and snatch one. Yeah, yeah. that's going to yeah. be, I'm going to have anxiety for a few days over that one. <laughs> I think the swim looks fun. The, I mean, deadlifts and burpee over bars probably a pretty good workout for me yeah. so there's a few that'll be good and i think it's just i don't know I, I think it's going to be fun to try to just execute well and try to see what i can do and push against some guys that are strong at some things here there's some 
some powerful dudes here um, that I think a lot of people traditionally would be like, oh, you know, that guy might not be a top 10 guy in a, in a field like this. But with a lot of events that are, you know, four, five, six minutes long, like some of those yeah. guys might be able to make a bigger splash than you might expect. Who do you have your eyes on? So, Well, I think a guy like Nick Block That's is, is probably a... Fridge. I think he's a guy that, like, you know, you would look at and he probably won't crush him at one. But then that bike overhead walking lunge, I, I bet you you see him in that top yeah. five or something. <laughs> and then, hope. you know, that barbell cycling stuff, like, you know, some heavy deadlifts and burpees. Like, he might he might surprise some people. And, and, and then all it takes is, you know, he's been working on some things that he, he needs to. And he surprises you in some events where you maybe didn't see him coming. And then he's, like, could be on the podium, right? So 100%. there's some good, there's some really powerful dudes. Willie George is a powerful dude. Cycles with barbell well. Like, guys like that will do great. So um, it'll be fun. I think it's a fun chance, too, to... You know, having this is kind of like, well, I guess it's the second big event I'll be at since the games. So it's fun to compete against some of the guys who, you know, who went to the top 10 of the games. Like, yeah, we got Adrian here, Will Morad, Saxon Panchik, like uh, Noah, like a lot of the guys who, you know, I wish I could have been there to compete against at the end of the game. So it's going to be fun to just go toe to toe with more of those guys now and just sort of feel like you're back in the ring. Is there, is there like a, when you start seeing the names start popping up, do you start printing them out and like putting them up on like the mirror yeah, rocky like four style whole, like eight by eleven blown up <laughs> poster board in the in the bathroom it's like grabbing people's instagram photos and just putting them up as like constant reminder of who you're here to crush that would be hard on my self-confidence probably but <laughs> no uh, all these guys really. have great seeing, tans yeah, just, yeah everyone's God. tans and those abs yeah. in the wall, he's like, in iceland how's nick's this haircut you're like what is going on but uh, haircut. <laughs> it's, it's really clean. It's a I don't great know what haircut. Say. He's, got a, he's got a great fade. High and tight. <laughs> I, yeah, I couldn't pull it off. My head would burn. Yes, yes, yeah. it would. Yes, but, it would be uh, detrimental. No, I think it's. I think that again, like I'm not, I'm not doing my job if I'm not paying attention. So I, I definitely know who's around, and I, I have a pretty good idea of what people are good at. So I think when you look at workouts come up, I have a general idea of who are the most threatening athletes in every event. Um, so, you know, even stuff like the, that back-to-back -back workout, like Travis Williams here competing as an individual, like that guy will burn the house down on that workout. At least for the first one, you better expect that he's going <laughs> to absolutely sell his soul. So you know that, right? There's, a, there's at least a handful of guys who, who can smash at least the first half of that. What's and that's still 100 points, right? So you have to know roughly who you're racing and then when you go in, you have a better idea of like, okay, if I can stay close to these guys or if I can stay ahead of this guy, relatively, I'm in pretty good shape. Um, so that's something as well as, you know, heat assignments that can help you in overall competition. Yeah, 100%. What's the, what's the weight on the power snatch for that event? Is it 155? 115. I don't 115. think you're going to see a lot. You're not going to see a lot of power snatches. Right, okay. Be a lot of like muscle, gross. Yeah, power for sure. Because they did, they did kind of like the sneaky thing. Where they, they put the lighter weight at the very at the end of that workout to kind of force people to go a little bit faster. I think than they're comfortable with. I think it's the only way to make those two time domains roughly equal. Because <laughs> you're gonna, people are gonna hurt after that first one. Yeah, if they left it at 155, it, it would have been a mistake. I think it would have been. It would have been a, like a long, slow event. Everyone would have done singles, mm -hmm. and you know now you, people are gonna have to do. Just like sets, good chunks to get through it and try to be done in, you know, three or four minutes. Um, it's also going to be interesting to see. I think, you know, we these events have come out and we've tested a few of them, but um, looking at the weekend overall, as it all takes shape, like, it's a pretty big durability test. Uh, we're doing a lot of leg work. So, you know, come a workout like that, that's high power output, like, do you still have the power output? Are your legs going to give out on you in two minutes there, doing a lot of that high-speed rep cycling, like just catching in a, in a jerk over and over and over, that little power uh, pop to push jerk? Is that going to wear you down? And, like, are people that tested this workout going to go a minute slower because it's just the cumulative effect of a week? And I think that there's a, there's a super possible, like a super good chance of that happening. Um, so I think that it's going to be, it's a, it's a pretty good test. Like, there's lots of short stuff. There's a few long ones. We've got a couple still left to come. But I think overall, um, it, it's going to test people's recovery really well. Um, you're going to have guys that will start to fade by the end of the week, and I'm just going to try not to be one of them. What's your uh, what's your what's your next conference? Are you, are you doing West Coast after this? Yeah. So you have uh, what is that? That's the end of March. So you have about, about a month. Yeah, you've got about four weeks, maybe five weeks. Uh, how do you how do you kind of recover, shut down for a second, and then peak back up, or do you just try and recover through it through sort of training? <clears throat> so that one. Like I said, we my coach has been pretty clear that she's like we're not 
we're not peaking for this. Like, we're going to kind of... We're going to taper a bit. It's not going to be a full taper. We're not going to get out, out of control on it. Because I think she wants to plan Rogue to be the next kind of proper peak, and then the games after that. So these next two are kind of... She's like, go have some fun, take the floor, like, get some more floor time and, and compete against some guys, um, get some competition experience, but... I think that because of that, you know, we'll come back and I probably, I'm not going to have like a week off after this event. I'm going to come back and be training right away. It'll probably be like a little bit of a deload for a week and then start to load back up and then have like a, maybe a small deload right before West Coast as well. Um, but it's good. Like part of the reason for me to come to stuff like this is you get the chance to compete against good guys who are like, this is your competition field. Like this is just yeah. a small simulation, right? And you get to do, for me, I get to do things that I'm not great at in competition. So stuff like those short sprints, I get to test myself in capacities like that. Go to a competition that's going to for sure have a swim workout, stuff that I need to do. I need to do more of that in competition and, and have that stimulus. So it's, it's, it's time under tension and it's just reps and it's just getting more comfortable in those scenarios. Because like, you, like, you don't get over that. I still get super nervous about competitions and... It's funny that even recently it almost feels like worse than it used to be just because I think there's, you know, there's added pressure that I put on myself and that I think that, you know, I need to, um, to perform a certain way uh, to meet expectations. And, I, and my expectations for myself are just getting higher and higher. It's like, you know, you watch some of the, your competitors compete and, you know, dominate a competition field and you're like, hey, shit. So if I need to, if I want to compete with this guy or that guy, I need to do that. And so, you know, less than excellence becomes unacceptable and you kind of like whereas years ago i'd be like oh you know like oh i took sixth in this event like that's great i'm like no nah, that needs to be top three and so i i just like my mentality has shifted a little bit and it adds pressure but i think it's it's not inappropriate to me that's just sort of like the evolution over time that's where i need to have my headspace be years ago i struggled with that being like you know i don't need to push to be like the best i can just be kind of like float around in there and it's good it gets the job done but i think that now i'm trying to develop a bit more of a killer instinct and and attack certain workouts more and so that's just testing like testing your your capacity and testing yourself so what you're telling me is that your podium finishes at the games were without a killer instinct <laughs> it, if you go back and look at my podium finishes at the games they were quite safe Ex like 2018 was a little different um and that was when i first started to kind of change my mind over that sort of stuff but i mean what 2016 i i finished like top 10 in like 11 out of 15 events or something like that but i I had no. I might have had like one or two top fives. Yeah, you never. You never tried to knock it out of the park. Yeah, yeah I yeah. just like was safe. And then same 2017, I had a rocky start, and then was like, you know, I was top ten a lot of events. I had like two wins that made a big points difference, um, but still like wasn't comfortable pushing paces. I think. So just the more I compete, the more I try to do that. You know, going to Dubai was a good test for that. Like trying to, to lead and trying to like win and trying to just be not just win but like win by a lot like try to push down on people um, and just impose your will in certain scenarios so i still feel like you know when i see a workout that's undoubtedly plays to my strengths i get almost extra nervous about it because i'm like oh man i should i and now i really need to execute on this one and it becomes not a question of am i able to do this it's like i'm certainly able to do this i just have to do it and if anything less is a mistake so I get, like, extra nervous about that. And, like, I, I very rarely have a, a circumstance where I look at something and I'm like, yeah, that's a good one. And I think other people look at it and they'll be like, oh, that's a good one for Pat. But I almost never feel that way about myself. And so there's always, you know, workouts like, let's say we go into the swim workout and I come out with, like, a top five. That's, like, I'll feel very good about that because I had very little expectation going in. But more and more I have higher expectations on workouts. So it's, like every workout i think oh man you know like that should be a top three like that should be a top I mean, top finish there and was so, a time that when the water was introduced yeah. it was it was like Bad okay someone pat. saved pat vellner's yeah. life right now and we've come a long way so i mean it's been it's been fine and i think you know this weekend too there's not the swim's not insane it's only a few hundred meters yeah yeah it's it's and once, 300 meters only once i think yeah it's a lot of pistols but <laughs> anyway, so yeah, hopefully everyone, my legs are fine after, you know, 300 squats, squats today and all the assault bike. But 
this is what I mean about the durability test coming in, is people are going to start to fade. And then see how your legs pop after all that. When yeah, you doing, have to... doing like 170 pistols after doing 300 weighted squats the day before and a bunch of lunges and a bunch of assault yeah, bike yeah. work. I don't see how that's a problem. Yeah, and we've got the heavy thrusters in the morning tomorrow <laughs> too. Yeah, no problem. No to, to kind of talk a little bit more about the, the mindset that you're describing here, because I'm curious, what's that adaptation feel like once you start developing that mindset, right? Because what you're talking about is switching the way that you approach the competition of these fitness events, right? And there isn't really anything novel about the events. Like, you've done a thousand, thousand workouts that have all of these different types of movements and combinations and stuff in them. You know, what's that adaptation mentally and the process to get there of, all right, now I can turn it on and not just beat but dominate the field in this workout um <clears throat> you know when you see uh when you know how matt's like famous for throwing up before workouts it's like that that's what it feels like it's like it's stressful it's very stressful and you i think that you develop that a little bit over time but yeah we've done all this stuff we've done it all and i've tested it and i've tested it but it's just it's like a constant question where you're like okay like i have to do it this time and i think my background in gymnastics was good for helping me with that and in the sense that i i'm a little bit more used to it maybe than some people but i also understand the pressures of like you know you get one chance like it doesn't matter how many times you did it i've got to do it this time right now against these guys and so you're constantly dealing with a lot of unknowns um and I think that that's a bit stressful is when you train and you know what you can do. But when you walk into a competition field, you don't know what everybody else is going to do. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that I, I, I watch the competition field fairly closely. Like, I don't, I don't do the, like, stay in your lane thing all the time. There are certain events where it's very valuable. But I think that there's times where you can gain a lot of data and information from your competitors. And so I really try to do that. So knowing going into a competition that my success is dependent sometimes on what other people are doing can be stressful and so i think that you come in with a number of unknowns always no matter how well prepared you are i come in and it's like shit and i always find that building into a competition i get like more stressed up until the day the competition starts and then once you you start and you can see where everybody's at and you can just like do it that it makes it feel better you just like, there's nothing else to be done. Up until the day you compete, you can always do something else to prepare. But once you're there and once it's on, it's over. Like, whatever you've done is done. And you can't do anything else even if you want to. So it's just you just have to compete and try to execute well. And execution is something that's super important. I mean, we've seen it in events now, especially single elimination events. We've got one here this weekend. The sprint at the games, the obstacle course at the games. Like, that stuff is, is super important and can make a massive point swing. And it's like, it doesn't matter if you're capable. It just matters if you do it now. Um, so things like that can just be very stressful. So it, like, it, it, can, be, it can make you very anxious. <laughs> so I think that it's kind of getting used to that feeling of nerves and trying to be able to use it well. And then to a certain degree, you know, like I was like woke up in the middle of the night last night, went pee and like had some trouble getting back to sleep because my mind was just racing. And then like being able to just reset yourself that, you know, it doesn't matter. Like at the end of the day, even if things go horribly wrong, it like it's not really that big of a deal. Like I'll still walk out of here and I'll be Pat Valner and it won't really matter. I'll go compete some more and like I'll go home and I'll have a job and I still have a fiance. It's like I'm still <laughs> Dr. Pat Valner. Like it's still like, you know, like life goes on and it's okay. Yeah. And I think that honestly that was an important thing for me to to experience at the games this year was like, you know, I, I up until that point had been basically nothing but successful in everything and competition wise. Um, so to like take a bad hit and walk away, you know, like kind of tail between my legs and then, you know, restart the next year and be like, oh, yeah, like it like it's still the same. Like nothing really changed that much. Like I have one less medal in my cupboard, but like it doesn't actually matter it could have been one less sword yeah, is yeah. Or yeah. Shield. <laughs> then it would have, i would have been probably stone. more hurt if it was something <laughs> like that but you know i think uh, things effectively like your life doesn't change that much at this point you know like i've had some success already and so i've kind of established myself and so things there's not like that much riding on it all the time but i still in my head i kind of build it up to that point so it's kind of overcoming that sometimes and just being like shut up go to sleep like it's fine you'll go you'll go show up tomorrow you'll take the floor you'll be all right 
Like, everybody else will be fit, but you'll probably be fit too. <laughs> and, like, it's fine. So you're, I think that you lose like your fitness tonight. Yeah, you kind of get in your own possible. head a little bit, right? And I think that so part of that development of like how do you attack things is just building confidence that like it's going to be fine. And I, and I think that like I said I envy people like Travis who who just innately have that confidence that sometimes there's events that that's just what you need is you just need the ability to just like Un unwavering. Yeah, big dick confidence. Yeah, yeah just, absolutely. You just know that you can run through a brick wall if you need to. Yeah, and so I think that I, I don't innately have that, and it's something I've been trying to build towards. And I think that over the course of a competition, I pick that up in terms of momentum if I'm doing very well. But I, I would say I rarely, if ever, walk into a competition feeling that way. You always like, you know, you tiptoe the start line in the first event, and I think everybody, kind of feels that way where you're like, fuck, here we go. Hopefully it's good. Hopefully everything I did was right. <laughs> and then you just kind of dive in and then, you know, you make it to the surface and you're fine. But um, it, so that can be super stressful. And I think that it's just like, yeah, it's a, it's a slow build. And I, I, there's times where I wish I was better for it. But I also think that, you know, I, I'm a better, I'm better prepared as a result of having maybe a little bit less of that confidence sometimes <laughs> is that. You know, you can be overconfident and underprepared. Yeah, it makes you yeah. a realist. But if you if you are prepared for like every bad circumstance that can come up, then then you're really truly prepared. Like you, if you think of like, okay, well this could happen. What would I do if this happens? Then you prepare for that ultimatum. And you know, but what if this? What if that? What if this? Like, yeah, you make yourself a bit crazy with anxiety maybe for a week before. But when the time comes, like then there's nothing else to think about. All those voices in your head that are like, well, what about this? You're like, oh yeah, then this. I already made that plan. But what yeah. about this? Oh yeah, then this. I already made that plan, and then you're already kind of, you're set. So, you're, you yeah. Like I think that being that kind of, you can be overconfident, underprepared. But often, if you're underconfident, you'll come in overprepared. And I think in the past at regionals and things like that, that was always what I did. Is I like, trained by myself all the time. I had no litmus test, so I'd like freak myself out, <laughs> and then I'd come in and be like, oh, never mind, I'm good, <laughs> and it was fine. It's but wild. Um, yeah, you had one arm yeah. for one I regional. Don't, I don't yeah. need two <laughs> biceps. Fine. This yeah. is fine. Yeah, so it, no. I think it's interesting. So the reason why I wanted to just dive a little bit deeper in there for a second is because we very rarely get to talk to athletes about their toolkit when it comes to the mental aspect of the game, right? So much of it is like, what does your strength training look like? What do your intervals look like? How do you, how much do you work out every week? But I think the adaptation that comes to the sort of like mental aspect of things uh, is very, very not just important, but also challenging to develop. Like that toolkit yeah, is I, real tough. I think, and I think that develops a lot. I think the, the people you typically see that have the best ability to do that, uh, it comes from a long sports background. So I think that a lot of people develop that in sports because it's, there's more reps. Like it's hard let's say now with the sanctional season, if you're aggressive, you can compete in five in a year. <laughs> um, so imagine playing in another sport where you have five games in a year. Like it doesn't exist. Yeah. But like if you play in like the average sport growing up, like, you know, you play, like I played lacrosse and things like that, like I play in a game or two every weekend during the season um, and you get, you deal with high pressure scenarios very regularly and you learn to deal with success in those situations and failure in those situations and how to deal with people and how to deal with yourself. And so I think you get good, you get better at that. And, and I think that some people innately are better at it than others. You see, watch any sport and you watch people come off a handle and, and do something dumb. But I think that there's, there's a lot more opportunity to develop those skills in a lot of other sports. Um, For whereas sure. here, you just have less chance. So, you know, mm -hmm. and if you're gonna develop it solely through this, it's going to take you a long time. Yeah, so you'll have guys who take five-year careers to then all of a sudden be like, fuck, finally I'm and, good. And it's, it's, hard to realize, it's hard to realize that that's the missing piece. If you're like just starting competing and your first yeah. competition is CrossFit, you're like, man, why is that guy just so much better with dealing with these nerves? I'm scared shitless right now, and I don't even know if I can pick up the barbell. And, but and some people can just do it's it. It's little things. You know, we, I talked with Brent a bit about it while we were in Dubai, and I think that some of the things that make us good – are not are obvious to us, but not obvious to everyone. Hundred percent. Um, so you know, you do things like, like anybody who's been a regular games athlete will tell you, like eating is something that's so trivial but so important. Like, this is a four day competition in the heat. Guarantee you, nobody's hungry at, at all, ever, all day. Mm -hmm. I woke up this morning, I didn't want to eat breakfast. Yeah. But like, 
you have to do that. That's part of your job, and it's going to make you successful on Saturday and Sunday. That's what I was telling him earlier today. So you don't like. Yeah, I didn't yeah. want to eat breakfast, and Chase was like, "Listen, dude, <laughs> Homie had you a have sausage. to perform. You have to perform. You gotta, you gotta eat scrambled eggs. How you are you gonna do some... all those accessories? How am I gonna do <laughs> several hundred reps of accessory, <laughs> accessory? Hashtag trademarked. It's not, but, but you know what I mean. But very much so. It's it's not <laughs> it's not I mean? obvious to the uh, obvious to but the then common you, you, person. You go to a guy who's you know you grew up playing baseball. You go play a, uh, in a tournament every once in a while where you're playing like two or three games in a day or something like yeah. that. Like you just you're used to that. Like okay, if between this is downtime, you need to rest. You need to eat. You need to do this, and then you're back on. And what it feels like at the end of you know a long weekend of playing repetitive efforts at high level, high level, like you. You're, you're sore, you're tired, and you, you have to be able to execute under those conditions. And I think that if you haven't had the opportunity to develop that and have those reps, it just like it doesn't, it, it's you don't not have, ingrained in you, right? You don't have that database. Yeah. You don't know what it's like if, fuck, I couldn't get back to sleep at 3 a.m. Yeah. and now I have to go and compete. Yeah. It, why is if you did sports growing up, you're like, oh, I've done that. It yeah, sucks, and, and like but I said, it's just it. more reps. Like you just, yeah. you've done it way more times. And you, and you have the chance to do it, you know, 40 times in a season instead of five. And all of a sudden, that's a massive difference. <laughs> and even the context of like, yeah, like you know, in a in a single competition, you, we've got whatever you know, seven to ten events. But in a, in a game and another thing, like you might have however many different moments in that game where things get a certain way, and you have to make certain decisions. And it so it just like there, there's just I think there's a lot to be learned that can transcend across different sports barriers mm -hmm. that, you know, and you're, if you played a collegiate level sport, like that teaches you something. Right. And yeah. I think that it's super valuable. And those are skills that we implement that I think are people know about, but they're, I think they're probably undervalued. And I think the people who do them really well are the people who are regularly successful. And it's, <laughs> and it's not surprising. Like you can look at those lists and say like, Oh yeah, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot more to it than just like looking at your background and being like, Oh shit, he did gymnastics growing up yeah. he's probably good at muscle ups and handstand walking well, it's like I mean, no the reality <laughs> for us nowadays is that yeah like yeah i did gymnastics growing up like the last time i did any meaningful gymnastics was over a decade ago yeah so it's like those aren't the skills that i'm using from that now no exactly yeah. i yeah. it helped me learn some things really fast sure but you know that's not what has allowed you to remain successful i mean nowadays a handstand walk and a muscle up is so trivial a skill it doesn't matter mm -hmm. like, everybody's so, got it same yeah, but yeah. totally it's all the accessory work i did it to get here actually just handstand walked from the airbnb his hands are filthy it's okay <laughs> uh it's miami street i know that you've got you've got a whole lot going on today i don't want to take up too much more of your time plus the sun is starting to maybe creep yeah, over yeah it's here. almost this might be the safest place i don't i don't want you to burn up but how are you how are you going to manage that stimulus over the course of the weekend the, the stress stimulus of like how do you how do you shut down between events and come back like where are you going to find yourself are you watching episodes of The Office back to back with like, your earbuds in? Like, Rick what, and Morty. What, what are you doing here? Ice bath. Um, probably what I'm going to do is get out of the heat. Well, first thing I'm going to try to do is, is win some events, and that takes some of the stress away. And then you're like two thousand dollars. Thank you very much. $2, yeah, $2, just you know, a little points buffer never hurt the stress, right? Yeah. But I think that to be successful in competition, like for me in an environment like this, I know last year I. You know, I get chirped nonstop about like, oh, you got enough sunscreen on? And I was like, man, I only spent like 10 minutes outside today. I like walked to the venue. I warmed up. I hit the competition floor. I went straight to my bed. And like, I just like, I didn't, I took and a I cold, watched I took that a cash cold, deposit in my bed. I took, cold, <laughs> I took a cold shower and I laid in my air conditioned bed until the next event. And then I walked out and I did the same thing. And I think that little things like that, like keeping your body temperature down, like that'll help your appetite too. It'll help you recover. It'll help you rest. And so I have some good ideas of what I need to do in terms of of that, that's going to allow me to perform well. Um, and then, I mean, yeah, other than that, I think, yeah, this, uh, the stress stuff, the anxieties, you just got to kind of get out of your own way. And like I said, I'll be stressed until we start. And then, you know, I think that from then on, the stress I experience is appropriate. I'll be stressed when I'm going into a workout that I know will hurt quite badly. I'll know if I'm going into an event that I know I need to perform a certain way, I'll be stressed. But I don't think it's a, an inappropriate response. Uh, you should be stressed about things you care about. If I wasn't stressed, I'd be super concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Just coming in here way too chill. Like, <laughs> yeah. hey, man, this is super so, cool. Yeah, I've been sunning all day. Yeah, like there's said, exercise there's, later. So that's. I think that that's a, also a way that you can measure your your investment in this sort of stuff. Is it's when I feel stressed, it means that like I know I still I'm still invested in it and I still care and I'm still like I still want to do it. So 
the day I show up and I'm like, nah, whatever happens, happens. And <laughs> you guys can ask me to leave politely. But, uh, yeah, so I think that, anyway, it'll be, there's things like that. I don't think I'm like, I got my fiancés here with me, my coach is here with me, so we're going to chill between the events and probably just do a quick recap and then probably try to just move forward all the time, watch some TV. I brought, like, two books. Can I suggest yeah. uh, you probably have Amazon Prime because everyone on the face of the planet does. Yeah. I, I might suggest Fleabag. Hilarious. Is it? Very okay. short. It's just two seasons, like six episodes a season. We've, we've, very, been, watching, very we've been watching lots of Parks and Rec on Prime. What, uh, what books Solid. did you bring? What books? Uh, I'm reading one called The Organized Mind. So I have like a heavy read and a light read that I'm doing at the same time. That's what's up. So like during the day, typically I read the heavy book because I have like a little more gas. Yeah, yeah. It takes more focus. And then at night when I'm just trying to like shut off and go to sleep, I read the easy book. Um, but the easy book's almost done, too, so I'll probably finish it, like, today or tomorrow, and then I'll only have the one. The new Captain Underpants? Yeah, no, it's a book called uh, <laughs> An Ocean of Time, I think. Okay. And then the, the, the heavy book is called The Organized Mind. Nice. But, um, yeah. Cool. Dope, dude. Pat, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate no your time No sweat, here. guys. Thank you. Literally no sweat because we're in the shade here. <laughs> oh, I'm still sweating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Good luck the yourself. rest of the weekend, man. I'm glad my back. You really see my back when I stand up. And uh, I might I suggest that you go around correcting everyone that refers to you as Pat Vellner to refer to you as Dr. Pat Vellner. Yes, I'm sorry, please. That's Dr. Pat to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah I'll definitely get right on that. <laughs> People right. love that. <laughs>